Good morning. It's Reverend Mike Capron. Um, we have a sermon this morning in our series on text that you can view more than one way. We're going to be looking at Acts 16 and some interesting events that happened uh, around that period with uh, the Apostle Paul and some of his comrades. Um, just to set things up, the subject of chapter 50 in the preceding chapter was the big question in many ways of the New Testament, which is, how can non-Jewish or Gentile Christians, you know, how do they have to act when they become Christian? Do they have to become Jewish first and obey all the Jewish laws and customs? Or can they, shall we say, bypass some of that? And there's a famous meeting in chapter 15 where the home church in Jerusalem discusses the matter, comes up with a letter and sends it out to all the churches in Asia Minor, which is part of modern day Turkey. So Paul and his friend Barnabas decide to visit those churches too. But at the end of chapter 15, they have kind of a breakup. Barnabas wants to take Mark with them, but Paul doesn't. So Barnabas and Mark head off to Cyprus. Paul takes Silas and heads up to Asia Minor where he will find a new friend. Um, I'm going to be reading the text and commenting on it. Uh, this is called an expository sermon. Here we go, Acts 16, verse 1. Paul came to Derbe and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Uh, Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. So Timothy, and this is going to become a big name in the New Testament, Paul writes two famous letters, First and Second Timothy, later on, um, kind of embodies this whole dispute that's going on, right? His mother's Jewish, his father's a Gentile or a Greek, and um, what's necessary for him to do? Well, it's not necessary for him to become circumcised, but if he does, he'll have more credibility when they're talking to Jewish people and sharing the good news of the gospel. And so he, shall we say, makes this sacrifice um, to have this surgical procedure um, as an adult. And um, that, that too is an act of faith. Um, I continue at verse four. They traveled from town to town and they dis delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem back in chapter 15, for the people to obey. Um, now, here's a part of the text that could have come out more than one way. You know, if you're in a local church and some representatives from your denominational headquarters come out and explain some things you are to obey, um, that doesn't always go well. Um, and it probably shouldn't always go well. But in this case, it does. Verse 5. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Um, that's really what we want from being connectional churches, that um, you know people consider things together and uh, some more senior people consider things and send out recommendations. And the, the purpose is that they are beneficial to the church at large and they serve the cause of the gospel. And that's what happened here. And I think it happens more often maybe than we want to admit it does today, um, and uh, may it always occur. Verse 6, Paul and his companions have traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit for preaching the word in the province of Asia. Question mark. Um, when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them. To me, this is the most interesting part of this passage. It's these mysterious references to being prevented, first by the Holy Spirit and then by the Spirit of Jesus, to uh, from, from going somewhere and doing work that they had planned to do. And I really wish I knew what this looked like, or maybe it's better that I don't, but it could be that we're talking about a purely spiritual experience here. They were in prayer, 
and they felt a leading not to go to those places. But there's a host of other possible explanations, right? There could have been terrible weather, either snowstorms or droughts, or I mean, we, don't know, we don't know what time of year it was, right? There could have been financial difficulties. We know that Paul um, was a tent maker, i.e. he literally sewed tents and sold them or repaired them for people. And um, maybe there was no work for him and they just didn't have the money to go traveling to these places. Um, maybe there was crime or lack of available transportation or rock slides. Maybe somebody got sick. Um, we well, just have no idea. Maybe they just felt kind of tired and needed a break. And whenever they thought about going, they couldn't do it. Or maybe it was a really clear spiritual leading. Um, we have no clue, but we do know in the life of faith that sometimes God closes doors. Um, we had planned to do something and it can't happen. And sometimes that is God preparing us to do something else that God would have us do instead. And that is what happens in this case. I continue with verse 8. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, Macedonia is part of the, the peninsula that has Greece on it. And it's across the water from where they are in Asia Minor. And they had not planned to go there. To my knowledge, no, no one has gone there to preach the gospel at this point in history. Um, but clearly, this is a spiritual invitation from God to go and do exactly that. And they respond immediately. Here's, here's verse, um, verse 11. No, I think I got to read you verse 10. Sorry. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace. The next day we went on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there several days. So here they are in a new territory. Now, we're going to notice that they went to the, the city of Philippi. Um, later on, Paul will write a letter to the Philippians, i.e. The, the church in Philippi. And it's probably one of his most positive letters. He feels very good about his ministry there and what that community developed as. And we're probably seeing the very beginning roots of it right here. Um, so what a wonderful thing that is. Um, and it's just this little incident on the end that shows the beginning of their ministry there. Verse 13. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. So, you know, that probably means maybe there wasn't a synagogue in Philippi and people who were either Jewish or Jewish minded didn't have a formal place to go worship so they were um, uh, they would gather at this spot on the river and um, and and they would have prayer together um, so here's what happens we sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there one of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia a dealer in purple cloth she was a worshiper of God, i.e. she was interested in the Jewish God, but probably wasn't Jewish. Um, the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. This ends our reading of this word. Um, but I'm going to say a moment. You know, I've already talked about how God closes doors, and sometimes God leads people in a certain direction. But if the signs aren't that clear, you know, how can you kind of assess or 
Christians like to use the word discern, whether you're on the right path or not. Um, and what a lot of wise spiritual people say is that you look for the fruit of what's happening. Um, are good things happening um, in terms of tangible stuff? Or are they good things happening within you? Are you becoming a person more filled with love and grace and kindness? Um, or some combination thereof, the two usually go together. And um, I think this story with Lydia um, is the first of several stories that show that there is fruit to this, um, this endeavor that they're on, this preaching of the gospel in Greece. And, um, you know, history will show that, of course, was the start of something amazing. And um, several more chapters in the book of Acts are dedicated to uh, discussing this time in Greece. And I just wanted to share this story with you. Um, as a church, we're interested in how we discern God's will and how we, how we adapt to changing circumstances as God leads us in new directions. Um, as a congregation, we are preparing to close in November in the First Presbyterian Church of Elmwood Park. And we believe that God is in that, um, that we are making a faithful decision, that we will stop being an institution um, in a particular building, in a particular place, but that God is still faithful to us and we are still faithful to God and we will continue to worship God in some other places and we will see what new opportunities um, God opens for us and we will look for the good fruit that comes from that. That's all for today. God bless you all. Amen.